We're on? Hello. Okay, good. There we are. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Rick Vogel with Netgear. I'm Director of Sales for North America for our retail group. Some of you I know. Some of you I've met around the industry in the past. Some of you I don't, and I'm very excited about meeting with you um, at this show. I want to thank DNH for having you out. This is a great opportunity for us to get to know one another, for us to demonstrate to you the power of Netgear and what we can provide to you as partners and customers. So thank you again for joining. Um, the clicker. You've got it, Arun, yep. thank you. Before I get into this, I just wanted to uh, let you know who's here with me. So Arun is one of our product line managers. He's gonna go through a lot of the product presentation today. We have Haley with us also. Haley, wave at everybody. Haley is one of the uh, sales managers responsible for our Mural product line. I know some of you have seen Mural um, and are interested in learning more about it, so we're excited to share that with you today. And then we have Sharon. Sharon is our sales manager that manages the DNH relationship for Netgear. So. Again, good afternoon. I'm only going to take a couple of quick minutes. What I really wanted to talk with you about just briefly is Netgear's vision with our retail partnerships. So one of the things that you need to know about Netgear is that we turn ideas into innovative networking products that connect people, power, businesses, and advance the way we live. You might be wondering, what does a networking company like Netgear have to do with a digital art product like Mural? Why did we get involved in that business? We'll talk more about that with you both at the showcase and throughout this uh, presentation today. So what do we deliver as partners with you? And what are we looking for from partners to help us get our products in front of consumers? We deliver products that are easy to use, they're powerful, they're smart. Netgear enjoys a very high market share in networking um, globally. We're very proud of that. We have a lot of you to thank for that. But also it's because we deliver products that are really innovative. They're different. Uh, Orbi is a great example of that. One of the first true whole home Wi-Fi platforms in the tri-band arena. Really great product. We'll talk more about that. Uh, we also are one of the first to introduce AX technology or Wi-Fi 6. Today's presentation really, and you probably saw it on the title slide, is talking about tomorrow's technology today. So that is genuinely what Wi-Fi 6 is about. We uh, continually innovate at Netgear. Every 18 months, you'll see it's a new product line or a new, a new part of the product line coming out. And that's very important to us. Net new product introductions is critical in this business with consumers. They need to see what's happening. Netgear is one of the only companies in networking truly innovating. And then our five-star customer service. Um, we have been rated very high for the feedback that we get from consumers when they do need to call in with a problem. And uh, I think you'll notice that our salespeople are also the same way. When you have a problem as a customer with us, we're right on the front line working with you to solve it. And then lastly, really about our values and our partnerships. So what you should know about the relationship that Netgear has with DNH. DNH is our premier distributor partner, partner within our retail business. And I say that because the relationship that we have forged over the years with the DNH team has been absolutely critical in delivering products to our retailers and then on to consumers. So you're here today because you have a very good relationship with DNH. Our partnership can be powered by that uh, fulfillment relationship and sales relationship that DNH has with you. So thank you again for that. Um, and then really, I think the most important piece of, of my presentation today is about the, the consumer's trust. When consumers are trusting us with their entire networking of their home, their gaming, their email, their Netflix streaming, everything has to just work. And the beauty of, of Netgear's products is that we design and engineer them to be very easy to use, very simple, plug and play for the most part, very little configuration needed out of the box. So that's a big part of the reason that we're asking for your partnership with us to help get these products in consumers' hands. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Arun, who's going to go through our product portfolio. He's gonna be talking a lot about Wi-Fi 6, so if you don't know much about Wi-Fi 6, this is a good place to learn it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rick. You guys can hear me well? Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, really happy to be here today. And you know, uh, before we jump into the right presentation, I actually you know, wanted to throw some numbers so that I can wake you up in the afternoon and we had a heavy lunch, so here we go. This is the slide I'm going to start with. So basically, um, you know, what we actually Rick, really iterated is that you know, Netgear has been standing for innovation for the past 20 years, and we have been stepping our foot forward every year to come. Every six to eight months, we'll have new products coming into each of, the, each of these portfolios. And as you can see, that this is actually a chart which shows how, how the networking segment has evolved over the past one year or so. There are some challenges that we are actually facing, and that's where the partnership with the right partners to be able to grow the business and the market together is what we are actually looking at. If you look at it, 
the, the premium segment of the router and the wireless systems market, that's actually one area where the connected home segment is really passionate about and that's where we are really innovating quite a bit. You know, the Orbi product line, the Nighthawk product lines, those are actually some of the examples that we have actually done. More numbers. <laughs> so, so basically, this is, this is just to come back to the same, you know, information that Netgear has always been the market leader. And if you go to any household, one out of two households will probably have a Netgear ne networking equipment, be it switches, be it your routers, be it your RB cable modem, whatever that is. So that actually underlines, you know, how we have actually valued this partnership and how customers really trust us for the networking equipment. Because, you know, this is the, this is the entry point for all the network needs for their home, for their family. So we cannot really lose that trust. I'm going to quickly skip over the slide because this is not going to give you a lot of information. So really jumping right into what is Wi-Fi 6 about, right? So in, in your connected home today, you know, as you see, more and more devices are coming into the home. You have your smart homes, you have your you know, uh, devices that is requiring more streaming requirements. You have your TVs, you know, talking, you have your uh, smart speakers talking to your TVs and so on and so forth. So what we actually have here is a latest generation mainstream technology, which is Wi-Fi 6. It's actually coming into the market to be able to get the maximum speed and the maximum performance for everybody. It's not a niche, it's actually for the mass market. Why is it so important? Right? Because if you look at it from, from an average consumer home, you may have like 15 to 20 devices today. Like in my house, anytime I go, I have a family of four, you have three iPads running anytime, phones are running there, you have your garage door opener, you have an Alexa talking to it. So the devices are just increasing. And by the year 2022, we expect that there'll be about 50 devices connected to the internet. And each of them have different needs. Like you have your screen in your living room, you have a screen in the bedroom, which is streaming 8K, 4K, you know, how all of this is actually going to use internet. So they are all going to be connected. And how do you manage these kind of number of devices that's coming into the, the density of the devices that's coming into the household. That becomes a big challenge. And to top of that, it's also about how you use the data that is coming into the internet. Like, not all the devices are going to use the same kind of bandwidths. You have your email, you know, that will be requiring several few KBs, but your 4K streaming or your 8K streaming is going to be much more stringent on the bandwidth requirement. And then, obviously, you know, if you're if you have kids like mine, they are into gaming, so they are going to be, you know, using that. And then, you know, if if there is a single person shooter, and then they get died, it's like, oh, the network is actually not working, and you blame it on the dad. So <laughs> that's exactly what I want. That that's that's the problem that we are facing today. And imagine that's not going to go down. It's going to multiply for more number of screens as you bring in, you know, your IoT devices, your murals, and everything else in the home. What's going to happen? This is what you'll see. You have your 15, 20 lane highways coming in, then choking your network at the entry point of the router. Wi-Fi will eventually die a very painful and slow death without actually having to improve the capacity. That's where Wi-Fi 6 is the most important thing. Because the single most, if you, you know, take away the single most message of Wi-Fi 6, that is going to be increasing the capacity for your home, for Wi-Fi. A lot of confusion actually arises between what is Wi-Fi 6, what is AX. You know, a lot of technological people used to be using the terminologies AX before. It's actually both Wi-Fi 6 and AX are the same. Wi-Fi 6 is uh, a naming that we actually, the Wi-Fi Alliance or the standard bodies together came in and took a leaf out of the mobile playbook. So you have this 4G, 5G kind of evolution that's happening on the mobile side. And then he said, you know, why can't we make it simpler? Why do you want to have this 802.11, 802.12, whatever that number is, and make confu confusion to customers? And that's when they actually started looking at how to make it, you know, eventually easy for the customers. And that's how the AX actually got transformed into the name Wi-Fi 6. And you may also think about, you know, there have been other technologies. Like, for example, we, are, uh, we have had... 11AD, we have had, you know, WiMAX and those kind of adjacent technologies which eventually die down. B 
because those are not mainstream. So if you look at it, Wi-Fi 6 is mainstream and it's going to be replacing all your N and AC devices in the next couple of years to go. So that, that makes it simple. So for, you know, for consumers to understand, it's actually Wi-Fi 6 is AX, Wi-Fi 5 is AC, Wi-Fi 4 is N and so on and so forth. That way it's, it's much simpler for customers to understand. There's also another logo that has been proposed by some of the smartphone manufacturers to show that this is actually Wi-Fi 6 capable. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of you have a Samsung latest phones, the uh, Galaxy 10s, and they actually show this. So this actually is, is similar to what they show in the 5G network. So you have a 6 on the top, which actually shows that uh, it's a Wi-Fi 6 capable device. What's, you know, we, we talked about what is Wi-Fi 6, right? But what Wi-Fi 6 gives to you? How is it, you know, better or beneficial than Wi-Fi 5? Why do you need it? You know, underlying factor, as I said, is capacity. But it's not just about capacity. It's also about being able to have more streams into the network. So what that helps you is actually multiplying. So we talked about multiple screens that you need to support, right? You have your 8K, you have your 4K. Both of them will be streaming at the same time. And how do you manage that bandwidth? How do you distribute that bandwidth? That is actually the power of having multiple streams. So in your Wi-Fi 5 or AC, you would often have about four streams, maybe up to eight streams. But Wi-Fi 6 is actually capable of up to 12 streams. Oops, I missed this one. Sorry. Okay. okay. In, in addition to that, there is also a capacity improvement. So the capacity goes up to four times the capacity that you have in a similar Wi-Fi 5 uh, router. So imagine you have a 1.2 gigabits per second kind of capable router. You can now go up to 6 gigabits. That's like four times the capacity that you can do. There's also benefit for mobile devices. So your, your uh, you know, phone doesn't need to come online and check for the Wi-Fi connection that often as you do for the current situation. If, you, so if your phone supports Wi-Fi 6, they can actually save battery life by actually coming in frequently. Or your smart home devices, like your camera doesn't need to come online all the time. So all the power hungry devices will also get benefit out of Wi-Fi 6. Of course, nothing, no technology will be you know, revolutionary if it is not backward compatible. So you know, I, bought your, I bought the cameras two years ago, but if it doesn't work with the new technology, that's going to be a complete waste of money. So obviously, backward compatibility is 100% just to give an idea how Wi-Fi 6 is able to get these things, you know, technology is great, but then how is it that you are actually able to push this much data to these different devices? So here is an example of how we can actually do it. So since Wi-Fi is actually transmitted over the air, it's actually free medium for everybody. So if, you know, imagine if four people are talking together in the same room, you wouldn't be able to hear anybody. Just like that, if different devices are trying to talk to the router at the same time, nobody is going to be able to transmit their data. So how Wi-Fi 6 is actually able to handle is, it uses the same bandwidth that's available and splits in based on what is each of the device and packs more data into that same bandwidth. That way you can actually have a huge chunk going to your smart TV, which is you know, power, hung power hungry and you know, data hungry, whereas you don't need that much for your security camera or for your thermostat because the data is not very intensive. So by packing more data into the same bandwidth, you can actually get the benefit of how you increase the capacity for the same smartphone. All right, so this is actually a very important stage wherein we talked about technology, why is it actually important? But there is a bigger question mark. You know, if you look at how technology has evolved in the previous generation of Wi-Fi, you had the 11N, you had the AC, but the gap between the transition is actually pretty huge. You probably have uh, seen that N came in and it was mainstream about 2010, but AC was there, but it wasn't really prominent until 2014 or so. So there's a huge gap of about four years within the technology was there, it's in a nascent stage, people are not adopting. But in the case of Wi-Fi 6, you know, it's revolutionary because mainstream devices have already partnered and introduce devices with Wi-Fi 6 capability. So they understand the value of how Wi-Fi 6 is important, and then they, uh, 
the, the devices are already in the market. If you look at you know, the latest one, the Samsung Galaxy S10, there is uh, Intel who have announced a couple of their chipsets that's going into HP and ThinkPads, obviously. And there is also rumors that Apple would be announcing Wi-Fi 6, if not this year, but maybe next year. So nobody really knows what's going to happen with Apple. But if you look at it, that's, that's the beauty about Wi-Fi 6. It's, it's mainstream and people are already adopting it. So the technology is here and it's supporting the devices that you have already in the market. Why is Netgear is, uh, so much of importance in this particular standardization or why is it that we are market leaders still? It's because we have a portfolio of devices that we have introduced in the Wi-Fi 6 segment. So these are two products that we introduced last year. The first one was the AX8 and the other one was the AX12. We started shipping almost a year, uh, probably around that time now. But we said that, you know, that's not the only thing. We want to be able to have newer technology to the masses and being able to serve the needs of every customer that's out there. So the latest one to the addition of this is an AX4 router, which is a four stream AX3000. So it supports a two by two plus two by two a 160 megahertz bandwidth. It is uh, actually starting to ship. It's already started shipping. Uh, we have one uh, which is running the network in the booth in the next door. So you can actually walk by and take a look at it, how it looks. Then we also have two other routers that we brought in, which is one of them is the uh, tri-band AX12. So this is having a four by four plus four by four plus four by four. So you have three bands where you can actually have one in 2.4 and two bands in five gigahertz. And each of them supports the AX uh, technology or uh, the Wi-Fi 6 technology. So combined speed is 11 gigabits per second, which is probably unheard of, but that's where the, you know, the market is really going. That's the one which is sitting right there. So I just made sure that we have a sneak peek of what we are talking about. <laughs> we have plugged it in. So. so yeah, and, and it's it's not just about you know people who um, we want to be able to cater to the entire uh, router portfolio of consumers, right? So we also introduced or uh, introducing pretty soon an um, RAX20, which is going to be a two by two plus two by two um, with the AX1800. So the speed levels is slightly lower in this one but it's actually shipping soon at a price point of 169. So as you can see, it's actually the only company that has uh, networking routers that's there for everybody in the market. So if you are in for a, looking for a router upgrade, you actually might want to consider one of these because it fits your need and your budget. This is a little bit more detail on the new products that I had highlighted there. So the AX4 or the RX40 is a, a four stream device which can do up to three gigabits per second. That's more for your mid to you know, uh, large home kind of thing. So you can deliver 160 megahertz for mobile devices. And as uh, you might actually be already familiar or you might listen to Intel's presentation where they'll talk about 160 megahertz, why it is important. Because if you have 160 megahertz bandwidth for the router and your clients, you can actually pack twice the amount of data that you have for a device. So you can get gigabit speeds. If you are subscribing to a one gig speed or you know, more, like let's say Comcast is rolling out pretty much everywhere in the US, and that's pretty affordable. So if the devices are also, the clients are also supporting it, the router is also supporting it, that's actually a win-win for both the cases. We talked about the tri-band AX12. So uh, the key is that this is uh, capable of doing up to 11 gigabits per second, so this is a beast itself. It has a 2.5 gigabit port that's coming into the van, so uh, it's, it's not for the ordinary consumer, let me tell you that. <laughs> so it's for somebody who really is passionate about networking and wants to get the best out of it, that's for them. And definitely all the things that you need for a processor, it's a, a 1.8 gigahertz processor, 
So all your gaming, streaming, 8K, you name it, it's going to run multiple streams on it. And finally, the entry level one, which is the AX1800 router. So this is something that we'll be coming up with in a few weeks from now, uh, hopefully. And it's also capable of putting on the wall so that you can actually use it anywhere that you want for budget-friendly customers. So, you know, Rick already touched upon, it's not just about, um, you know, we are, we are great in networking. We have a pretty good portfolio in networking. Routers is one part of the segment. But we are also looking at other segments like, you know, adjacent uh, networking, like, for example, extenders or Wi-Fi network extenders is also important. So how do you ensure that that technology gets transpired into other categories is also what we are innovating every, um, every year. So the EAX80 is going to be the first of the um, extenders that will be coming out with uh, Wi-Fi 6, and that's expected in uh, October timeframe. Similarly, we also announced an Orbi Wi-Fi 6 solution which is going to be a two-pack. So you have a router and satellite, which is capable of both doing Wi-Fi 6. So the speeds, combined speeds, is going to be a mammoth. And then you can ensure that if you have a huge house, if you have a barn, if you have a swimming pool, if you have whatever that is, you know, you're, it fits your needs. Mother-in-law quarters, yeah. Just set up two of them, and you'll be set for life. Touch on mesh for a second. The idea that mesh is different from standard switch. Absolutely. Yeah, so, so one of the key benefits of having a single router in the home is that you expect that when you get a router or when you upgrade to a router, it covers the entire home. But not often, you know, or most often what happens is that you have your entry point for your internet provider that's coming into one corner of the house. And unfortunately, the router has to go very close to that entry point. So you may have a huge house, but the router is actually sitting in one corner, so it's not really covering the entire home. One way to patch up that solution is going to be how you can put in an extender and then extend the network. But oftentimes, you know, unlike this one, this is actually mesh extenders, but regular extenders often have a problem that you have to switch different network names, you lose the bandwidth, you lose the speed when you go from one network to the other. So if you imagine you are streaming your Netflix downstairs and moving upstairs, like, oh, shoot, it's actually completely stopping after that. You have to reconnect to the Wi-Fi. What Mesh is actually doing is be able to have these two units be able to seamlessly hand off because there is only single Wi-Fi name throughout the network. So your router will have the same name as what you have for the satellite, like in the case of Orbi, so that you can seamlessly hand off all the devices and the connection seamlessly goes through. You also have capabilities like guest network, which hands off easily. So if you have a party going on in the home, you don't want to share your Wi-Fi, you can actually enable the guest Wi-Fi, and that will also hand off easily. So uh, that's one way to do it. Uh, one other big difference is in the case of our mesh, we actually focus more on the tri-band. How tri-band is different from dual band is because you have a dedicated connection between the router and the satellite, which will prevent you from bandwidth loss. So regular extender, you have to listen to the router, and then you have to speak to the devices. You have to do this ping pong kind of thing. So you are not actually efficiently handling this, because the same channel that's actually talking to the clients and the router. But with the dedicated channel that's connecting between the router and satellite, you actually avoid that. So you'll have a 5 gigahertz and a 2.4 gigahertz to the device dedicated, and there is a channel that's there between the router and satellite at all times. So. Yes, so uh, in the Orbi product line, we actually introduced uh, an Orbi Outdoor, which is uh, IP65 compliant and also capable of working with any router that you have to create that mesh network. So this is actually a tri-band device. I don't have a slide on it, but this is a tri-band device, and it also has a dedicated backhaul connection onto the router, and it will work seamlessly for any router. So it's like your extender, but having the features of Orbi. It's called Orbi Outdoor. We call it Outdoor B. Yeah. <laughs> and we're demonstrating in Well, I shouldn't say demonstrating. We have one. We have one unit out there. there. Yeah. So it's RBS 50Y. That's the SKU number. 
Yeah, so, you know, as, as we started, right, so we, we talk about technology, how it is actually bringing in, you know, a disruption into the home. You can talk about any uh, disruption like electric cars coming in. Wi-Fi 6 is actually such a disruption because it is not only that it's a new technology, but it's coming more mainstream and people really want it or re really need it because everybody wants great Wi-Fi. It's become a utility now. So with that, I'll hand over to Haley to have a quick discussion about murals. Would you like this one? Uh, hello. Nope. Hello. Okay. Well, my presentation's a bit different than this um, disruptive Wi-Fi 6, which I learned a lot about. Thank you. Um, okay. So the mural canvas, like Rick said, you know, Netgear is no longer the router you leave inside your closet. They want to be, you know, the reliable company that customers continue to come back to, uh, you know, whether that is a router or a digital canvas or, you know, Nighthawk, there's, uh, you know, they're trying to be the connector uh, to the smart home. And that is how Mural fits in here. So I keep forgetting I have a slide because the product is so much better. Um, so basically, the idea behind Mural was to make art universally accessible. Uh, you know, just like Spotify did for music, Netflix did for movies and TV shows, Kindle did for books. We built a digital canvas that you can stream artwork and photography. So, you know, you don't stream your email to it or your TV. Um, and I think that's a, an important thing to remember because, you know, this is something for the other three walls that you have. And your TV goes on one, you know, anywhere that you have decor up. It is a dynamic, changing gallery wall um, of content. So. As we know, the smart home is a booming industry and continues to be. And we are very much in that, the heart of the smart home. Um, so like I said, you know, anywhere that requires artwork or, you know, something that's ever changing, that's where Miro comes in. And I think that we obviously live in a world of extreme, uh, indecisiveness and we are constantly itching for something new. So we um, have created a product that encompasses design, art, technology, and kind of marries it all together. And it's time to elevate your art with Mural. So we have an online art library of over 30,000 different pieces of artwork and photography. So we have the product, we have also product, and then the, um, application in which people control the product. So we have the mural canvas. This is the 27 inch. We're coming out with a smaller size um, in the next month, which will be 21 and a half inches. Um, it'll come in two extra colors. Um, sorry, one extra color. So it's black, white, walnut, and birch. So now it's just an even more uh, wide variety of uh, frames that could fit into any home or office. Um, then the art library, which is equally as important as the campus because you want to display all of the incredible works that we license and copyright from institutions all over the world. So uh, that art library is um, accessible through our um, online platform plus the app. And then another way, which is my personal favorite, is the gesture control. So let's say you have no idea what you're looking at. Gesture up and you have a nice little art card to boot. Um, so, you know, I think that it's important to, sorry, I'm just gonna keep like, we don't, we'll discuss this in the room. Um, so the whole technology behind this is called true art technology, which makes us different than, you know, any other screen. And I always like when Mural is set up next to a TV or a computer screen, because you could obviously tell how different of a product it is. Um, so a couple of other, let me think. Nope, I hit everything. Sorry guys, I'm just, I wanna keep this moving. Um, so sleek, modern, classic frame, uh, like I said, we'll now have two uh, sizes, 27 inch and 21 and a half inch, which I know for um, a couple of you that, you know, 
we've worked with, price is always, you know, a deterrent from people wanting to carry the product. So I think that this will open up a whole boatload of doors. And, uh, oh, very cool. We'll be adding a QR code. So instead of, for anyone who's, you know, set up a mural canvas, this is going to be a lifesaver. All you have to do is just scan your phone on it and it'll be linked up to your um, home Wi-Fi. Okay, we already went over that. The art library. Uh, this is really uh, something incredible. I mean, I was employee number like six of this company before you know Netgear acquired us one year ago and we were just a little old platform with some thumbnails of art. Now we have collections that are National Geographic. Uh, we just made a deal with uh, Game of Thrones. There is the Little Prince, which is a big uh, virtual, this is so sensitive, um, a big virtual book that's basically, now we have it on the canvas. So, you know, we keep adding valuable content to this platform, which is why, you know, like I said, the hardware is beautiful, but the content that is available is even more beautiful. Just a little, uh, background of the mural audience, surprisingly, but not really surprisingly, most of the buyers are male because they're gifting their mothers, wives, daughters, um, you know, a, a pretty solid income coming from both ends of the household. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is really um, a bunch of different audiences that we have hit, whether that's the elderly or students. Anyways, just a couple of in-store displays that we have. We're in Bloomingdale's. Um, if anyone's in New York, we're in the 59th Street Bloomingdale's windows until August 26th. Um, so there's just, you know, we find that setting it up like a gallery wall is the most receptive way for people to understand what the product is. So we're really gearing towards merchandising like this in all of the stores that we're in. And just as important as retail, there are plenty of other opportunities for mural to go into, whether that is a soccer stadium or a hospital or an assisted living or a school or an office. So, you know, don't just limit yourself to thinking, oh, this is just a product for the home. It's a product for everything, you know, and I don't, I don't have to say much more after that. You, you see this baby. I'm sure all of you want one. Um, this is more or less the same, just some specs and features that I can speak to more in depth uh, at the showcase. So that is Mural in a Nutshell. And thank you. swivel mount, it will go dark for a second. Thank you, Haley. It'll go dark for a second, and then it will come back up with uh, portraits of and images that are only intended to be seen in the format in which it's currently showing. So as an example, you wouldn't be able to see a landscape portrait when it's in, um, por uh, landscape photo when it's in portrait form. Um, Haley did touch on the fact that it ha every image has an art card. It's really, really cool when you're looking at something, you don't know what it is, and up comes information about it. So this is an educational tool, as well as really a great, a for a great foray into a consumer's home. They can also upload their own images. Many people ask us, well, what about the pictures of my kids? I have one on the wall in my home. We have four children, and their pictures are all over it. They love to walk up to it and say, wait, Dad, why is Grant being shown and not Jackson? I'm going to change it. So it's a lot of fun to play with also, and it's really, again, a very good educational tool. So I'm not going to take any more time. I know we got to wrap it up. Thank you very much. Nick, do you want to come up and... Uh, okay. Thank you. How much? Oh, the question. Um, come see us next door, but I will tell you, the 21-inch canvas will be starting at $399, the 27 at $599. Okay?